Inspector Williams, come in, have, have a seat. Um, I just want to compliment you on your fine show in it, the karate demonstration. I hate that I couldn't be there, but it's sure for this county duty calls. Thank you, Sheriff Taylor. That's a nice compliment. But I'm sure you didn't call me in just for that. Look, I feel we could pop out a murder in this community. Right now, it's just a missing persons case. It might not even be that. The reason I called you in, it was uh, William Rivers. His native name is Billy Two Rivers, and it's my understanding that you served with this man in the military. You know him, you know his behavior. And that might be our only way of cracking him down. That might be our only way to possibly find out where those foul play. So what it is, I feel that he could have been murdered in this reenactment of the West. Right out in front of everybody. Nobody suspecting anything. He was on the bad guy's side. He could have been shot, carried off the yard. And the audience possibly thinking that that was part of that. That's what we got to find out. That's why I need your help. Sheriff Taylor, I hope that it's just a missing person case. I hope that it's nothing to it, but I will work with you and try to rule this out. Okay, I'll be in contact. Thank you very much.
Look, buddy. Us cowboys are tired of you loosing around here asking questions. Accusing us of something we're not guilty of. Every time that I ask something about Billy Two Rivers, everything gets quiet. And it seems like uh, somebody wants to shut me up. I've been physically attacked more than once. And most of it comes from asking questions. Now look, if you've got the answers, I want to know them. Got nothing to hide? Give me the answer. We'll put you down. Just uh, how lucky do you feel? some type of evidence, possibly a blood stain or something. Surely the fluorescent team could have came up with something. Look, uh, Mr. Williams, let me fill you in on the history of uh, Meadows County. What it is to Meadows back through the ancestors. They brought up acres and acres of land when it sold for 10 cents or less an acre. And it was handed down to the children, the grandchildren. So, uh, Mr. John Mattis, he runs this town. He's the man in charge now. And when the interstate went through, he had to give way to the interstate but he became a very rich man. A very rich man. He controls his county. The town was here first, but he stopped all factories, shopping centers, and other means of employment from coming in. This is a tourist site. He has a reenactments of the West. He was a historian. He loved the West. So what I'm saying, I just feel that Mr. Rivers could have been murdered. What I'm saying, murdered in this reenactment of the West. All we got to go on is Mr. Rivers' behavior. What I'm saying is, in the military, he was a good person until he got to drink. When he got to drinking, he got mean. What it is, he liked the high standard of living. What I'm saying might not have anything to do with a mob head. It might not have to do anything with anybody owning money. 
He probably wasn't connected with drugs in any way. Now this is just a wild guess. I failed it. Whoever, whoever killed him, I feel he had a quick temper. He was quick to fight. Somebody could have been out to set a lot of debt, and that could have cost him his life. That's what I'm saying. Been in, they found no blood stains. Possibly the man could have bled from the inside. Possibly he fell on a bell of hay. Well, I don't know what a cowboy's using. I don't know what year they started bailing hay. He wouldn't give him any protection hiding behind the bell, but that's part of the act. It could have been a planned act. Let's just say if Mr. Rivers fell on this bell of hay, and bled in it all, possibly uh, the blood was taken away with the bell of hay. I don't know, there's no evidence to convict this man. There's no evidence to convict anybody for possibly killing this man. There's no signs that he's dead, or something just don't seem right. What I'm saying is, what you're saying that man was shot and he was ushered out. It was all part of the show and people thought that it was a show, no foul play. Possibly the man bled from the inside. Possibly he fell over a bell of hay. 
and that could be part of the act. So what I'm saying is, um, the blood could be in the hay, but the hay's been removed. Well, what I can tell you about Mr. Rivers, unlike most Native Americans, he, um, he lives high class. What I'm saying, he lives in a brick home. He, he, he made good money at employment. But all these clubs and whatever he goes to, it just, uh, money-wise, it don't match up. He seems to be living beyond his means. I don't know where he's involved with any crime organization. I don't know that it was a crime hit. I don't know that it was. And I don't know that it's any foul play. Well, that's what I want you to do, uh, Mr. Williams. Rule it out. Rule out foul play. And track Mr. Rivers down. Track Mr. William Rivers down. Let's get out of here. These mosquitoes about to eat me up. No, I think that we could be on to something. Things are getting hot. The questions that I'm asking, people don't like it. I think you could be right. I mean, there's no evidence of foul play, but I can see the reaction. I can see the reaction in the eyes. I can see it. So what I'm saying, I'll just stay with it and possibly um, something will give. What it is, Mr. Williams, there's a lot of crimes in this community that I've got to deal with. I've got to cry to stop murder. Cut down on unnecessary fight. Possibly somebody to get killed from it. I've got to enforce the law. I've got to be there on any 911 call. I've got to be there when needed. And what I'm saying is, until we see that it's foul play, What I'm saying is going to cost the county a lot of money to bring a task force in. When it might not be necessary. I don't know, but I just feel that the killer will come to us. What we got to do is trick this man. We got to trick him into making him think that we know more of him than we really do. What I'm saying is, We'll watch the reactions. Maybe we might come up with something. Well, just keep up the good work. Stop.
I go wandering alone. Long are the hours since we drifted apart. Deep in my heart is a song. We'll send that out to her over in Knoxville, wherever she is. We control the parks, the farms, the apartments, and everything else in the county. From the information I've gathered, you, you took a bullet in the leg from some madman in, in an apartment. Yeah, I took a bullet in the leg, but we still brought him in alive. You're a trained officer. Do you mean you couldn't shoot straight and bring that man in? Well, I shot at him, and I came close to him, but I missed him, but I had orders to bring him in alive, so I couldn't kill him. I've read the reports, and the man got time in a mental hospital, and he'll be out on the streets before we know it, and I believe you made a bad choice here. Huh? Howdy, how are you? Sheriff, the bank on Baker Road's been robbed. Bank robbers took off, took refuge in the housing project. It's got victims. Well, let's get out there. I want to be with my men. I want to bring this crook in alive. Now. Sheriff, I give you a good compliment on bringing that man in. Now, I was out there with you. You've done a fine job. Well, I think my men deserve the credit for bringing this guy in. He's a good representative of the law in this community. He done a great job. I think you used poor judgment. That man was shooting to kill, and you should have brought him down. Hmm. I feel we did the right thing. We got a man in there with tear gas before something bad happened. Bob, you wasn't even in your jurisdiction. How did you know what went on? I wish I had been there. Jump in my case. Sorry about that. You I wasn't wish even I was there. there. Well, 
what would you have done if you had him in there? Bob's been over to see you. Bob, being John Meadows, uh, I heard that he was harassing one of you deputies for not shooting a man. What I'm saying is, he thinks that he controls Meadows County, my county. But, uh, I've got to win this next election if I'm just holding my composure and win. In the next four years, I'll get things straight. But we can use this man. Yep. It'd be good. Well, look, uh, I'm going to send him out to talk with you. Okay. Well, look, uh, um, I'll be glad to pour you a drink. I mean, I know you. Uh, that's all right. What it is, you can let some of your deputies cruise you around. I yeah. know uh, the sheriff of the county, you can't get caught for driving down the influence. <laughs> <laughs> when I would drink too much, I will. Uh, I'll put my deputies to work, though. Yeah. Carry me where I want to go. Yeah. Can't pay them for nothing. Yeah. Of course, the county pays them. What I'm saying is, he thinks that he controls Meadows County, my county. But uh, I've got to win this next election if I'm just holding my composure and win. It makes a set president in all these places. Uh, he's just that type of guy. It shows up. You know, uh, I think I can gather more information by just uh, being around the people and listening to them talk. Like, a, well, that's just I, I suspect somebody. Mm. Well, they tell me one story one day and one the next. Now, mm. what would you suggest? How do I talk to people like that, especially in a bar? Well, you need to get them off to the side and, and uh, not have them around a crowd of people. Get them over to one side, just one on one, you and them. And, and a lot of times they'll tell more than they would. They'll open their stuff up more than they would being around a, another a group of people. So you need to move them away and, and do a conversation with them off to the side. What do you think? That's good thinking there. You, uh, I hadn't even thought of that. I bet you that's the case. I bet you anything that's what's going on. We need to check that out good. What would you suggest? How will we go about uh, checking it out? Some of the guys that I used to work with is really good at that. And they would do they would really do that and do a good job for me. I'll contact them and see what kind of plan they can put together. Oh. Okay, uh, what I plan on doing, I plan on uh, 
you know, hanging around at the bars. And I was working under cover. I might get more information like that. Mm -hmm. If I saw I'm an investigator, uh, there'll be enough trouble with really. somebody going to ask questions, answer questions. Yeah. But, uh, I'm going to try to gather what information I can out of loose talk. Okay. What we got is nothing. What we got is all in Officer Denbo's mind. It's one thing to live in a fantasy world and have conspiracy theories, but it's another thing. We've got real crimes and real investigations, and this is reality. We've got to get busy. We don't have time for fantasy. All I'm saying is that somebody is going to make a mistake. What I'm saying is, if there's somebody out of town, I don't think we can catch them. You might get a task force and track them down 10 years from now. What I'm saying, so we don't know that there is a murder. But uh, there's a strong point that we have got a missing person's case. Now what I'm saying is, Mr. Rivers, he traveled a lot. He could have just get tired of the place and just left. Went pricey for himself. He could have got in some brutal fight and possibly for his own good felt that he should be getting out of town. I don't know what the problem is. He could possibly be living under another name. I don't know. Start with, I don't know that we're even, uh, We have got a case. But um, I failed it. We should find out. It's one thing to live in a fantasy world and have conspiracy theories, but it's another thing. We've got real crimes and real investigations, and this is reality. We've got to get busy. We don't have time. What it is, Officer Scott, you insist on doing everything your way. Everything's supposed to be so complex. There's nothing wrong with just plain down to earth investigating. What I'm saying is, if I ask enough questions, get enough information, I feel that I can track the man down if he's living. And uh, if it's not, well, it might take a task force to come up with the body if there's foul play. No, you don't want me to solve this case. You don't want me to solve it. And you might be the guilty part. Don't look good on your part, Officer Scott. Not at all. Uh, what I want to talk with you personally uh, about Sergeant Scott, you heard about him putting these drug people down. Yeah. And he could have called for help. Mm -hmm. I mean, what I'm saying is, if we know what the problem is, we got the men to handle it. But no. He wanted to handle it on his own. Mm -hmm. But, uh, do you feel he could be a suspect? I do and I don't. Go on.
The way he acts at certain places, he has a tendency to overstate stuff. Like he's covering up something as a suspect. And then at other times, you would think he was innocent. So, I don't know either way. Well, so what I'm confused about now, well, if he had anything to do with the distance. Range up in the sky, bombers and sport of fire. What I'm saying is he runs this county. That I found out. Because there's no factories. And I mean, what I'm saying is uh, these touring sites, this way of making money, well, he can put these people out of business and they're just uh, 
completely out of work, nothing to support their families. What I'm saying is, and this John Mattis, he's a powerful man. What I'm saying is, all these cowboys you see with badges on, what I'm saying, they're on here, so his force. The county has a right for sheriff's patrol, and he's got his own men. And they have the authority to enforce the law. I mean, they run this county. Now, what I'm saying is, keep this county straight. I've got to stay in. I've got to stay in. So what I've got to do is go on and enforce the law. Don't make that big an issue that I think possibly I'll, he's out of focus. And hope to win the election next year. What I'm saying is, this Mr. Matt, he's a powerful man. I mean, all these children resources, if these people out of work, they got families to support. And where's the next dollar coming from? They will not get it in this county. There's a lot of third your brother in jail. No, not me. I think it'd be a good idea to shoot you both. I think you guys ought to slap some leather while you got your... get in contact with you. I mean, uh, you're missing a gunfighter. And you're going on with these uh, reenactments of the West as if uh, nothing ever happened. We all have a schedule to maintain. If the people supporting us pull out, we all go hungry. Mr. Meadows, I realize that you are in the tourist business in reenactments of the West. You are not a suspect. Possibly one of your cowboys had a, a live round in his chamber. And it was an accident. I mean, Mr. William Rivers, he is missing. Sure, my heart bleeds for all those people who passed on. In a business, you don't quit when things don't go the way you want them to. Mr. Maddows, your cowboys have attacked me two different times when I was in the wooded area trying to gain information on Mr. William Rivers. Possibly he was in that area, possibly I had a gun fight. So far, I found nothing. Make sure cowboys look guilty. Again, Mr. Mattis, you are not a suspect. Maybe you can help me get to the bottom of this case. Think about it. All I'm asking, just think about it. Billy Two Rivers, he had a different attitude than most uh, Native Americans. 
what it is, his attitude was, let the white man kill the cow and I eat the steak. The buffalo is gone. Frontier is over. It's over for me, it's over for you. The difference is, you don't want it. They got a lot of shopping centers and interstates built in places that you used to play your fields. The frontier is over for you, but you don't seem to care. And he told me in Vietnam, he said, this is the last frontier left. Uh, you know, if you live in a fantasy world, we've got real cases. We've got reality here, real cases and real crimes to be solved and real investigations. We don't have time for fantasies. No, you just don't want me to solve this case. Then maybe you're the guilty party. Could be uh, corruption in the side of the uh, sheriff's office. Now we know that Mr. Mattis controls his town. Maybe controls you. Mr. Williams, maybe I brought you in for nothing, but something just don't seem right. I know you go with the gut feeling, and this time I've got some feeling that something's not right. Still, so, we don't know that there is a murder. But uh, there's a strong point that we have about a missing person's case. 
Now what I'm saying is, Mr. Rivers, he traveled a lot. He could have just got tired of the place and just left. What a pricey for himself. He could have gotten some brutal fight and possibly for his own good, felt that he should be getting out of town. I don't know what the problem is. He could possibly be living under another name. I don't know. Start with, I don't know that we're even, uh, we even got a case. But um, I failed it, we should find out. Well, just keep up the good work. You know, these foreigners come over here and get their citizenship. And uh, they start these gangs. Especially the Chinese, they got some reference because they did this karate, they did this karate stuff, and, and it looks important to these people, and they, and they get into the gangs with them because they like that karate look, and uh, they feel like you know if they can learn that, they're you know they're, they'll be the greatest. So uh, that entices them to join the karate stuff. And they come in and start these little groups. That's not really good. Oh, these gangs, they're tough. But they aren't responsible for building two rivers. I know what happened. I don't know who the guilty party is, but I tricked these men into thinking that I know more of them than I would have done. They think that I know enough of them to send them to prison. So they'll be coming at me. But to get these men in the open, I've got to handle it on my own. Mr. Meadows, I just want to stop in and give you the good news. We found uh, Wheaton Rivers, Billy Two Rivers. He's in the hospital. What happened was he was robbed in the wooded area with two men with clubs and they left him for dead. Then uh, a good Samaritan came along and got him to the hospital and uh, he didn't want to get involved, so Billy told him it's just a fight that I lost. That's what he told the people in the hospital. What happened at that Western show? It was a woman stalking Mr. Rivers. He was worried about her showing up, so he came to the party. 
took a duster and a wig, and sure enough, she showed up at the last gunfight. So he got under the duster and wig, and he got out without being suspected. People signing autographs and taking pictures. So there was no foul play on that part. Well, I just want to let you know that everything is okay. Well, I wish you the very best week or two in sight. It's nice getting me, Mr. Meadows. You know, Sheriff Winslow, just when I thought that we'd got to the bottom of the problem, here comes another. The Good Samaritan that took Mr. John Rivers to the hospital, he's missing. What I'm saying, thanks to Investigator Williams, I've got three men in jail that I think are responsible. I've got evidence to believe that when they found out that John Summerson took Mr. William Rivers to the hospital, they thought possibly he knew enough of them to get him in trouble. So they went back and they found him. What it is, uh, I don't know that he knew anything on him, but they robbed him. Just plain old, simple, common robbery and they left him for dead. I've got that emergency information. I can't prove it yet. They left him for dead. You know, back in the olden days when I first started in law, they'd sit you down in this straight chair. The room would be real dark. And they'd pull this bright light down on your face. And then they just really start popping the questions to you, and you, you know, they just sweat it out of them, and scared out of them, and it's a whole lot different nowadays than the way it was then. But really, that's that's the way they should do it now. I think they'd get a lot more straight answers out of people. I'm going to take your advice, Sheriff Winslow. I'm going to put these men under light. I'm going to interrogate every one of them separate. Interrogate every one of them separate. If their stories don't match up, I know that I'm on something. But I can't, oh, uh, what it is. I can't, I don't want a false confession. I'm going to strictly by the law, but I'm going to use old-fashioned law procedure. Now, when you're questioning these people, watch the expressions on their face. Watch the the uh, quiver in their eyes, and the jumping of their their lips, and just their facial expressions all together. You can pretty well determine whether they're telling the truth or not. They get all sweaty and and all uh, irritable and they, they squirm and that kind of thing. You can pretty well tell. You put the pressure on. Uh, I'm Officer Denbo. And uh, is there any possibility that you might have any information on this case that we're working on, these three uh, missing people? No, sir, not right at the present time, but if I find out any information or anything, I'll try to get in contact with you. Thank you very much, Wes. We're really in a quandary over this case of what we're, we're, we're working on. Uh -huh, I understand. Okay. Right Thank you. What you mean. What it is, information I got out of these men. Two of them were responsible for all 
a saw doom, beating up Mr. William Rivers. Taking his money, it was just robbery, I, no more than that. It wasn't a mob here that didn't have anything to do with the organized crime. So when they uh, felt that Mr. Williams, Investigator Williams, had enough on them, they wanted to quieten him down. So uh, they brought in an expert man to try to stop Mr. Williams, but it didn't work. They thought uh, it didn't work. You know, a lot of these people lie. They've been doing it all their life, and they're good at it. They actually believe what they're saying. So what you need to do is check out their character first. What it all amounts to, there was a murder in this county over 20 years ago. Blood stains were left and blood samples were taken. Back then, DNA wasn't updated the way it is now. There was nothing to be proved. As uh, far as everybody was concerned, possible. The killer could have been from out of town. Hard to catch. With no more evidence, it was turned over to the cold case files. Not enough evidence to react. That was 20 years ago. With the updated DNA, uh, one of these men somehow scratched their hand when they was uh, when they attacked Mr. William Rivers. So I've got a blood sample. I've had it sent to the lab with updated DNA. We've got evidence to show this was the same man involved in this killing of 20 years ago. It's not saying these men can be convicted in a court of law. What it is, is saying we know who the guilty party is. So it's going to be up to the judge and jury. What it is, we solved the case, possibly by accident. It's been around now for 20 years. To start with, I'll thank all you citizens and everybody in the community for coming out to this meeting tonight. I thank you for your support. We've got the task force with us tonight. We've got a missing person. John Simmerson, the good American, that took called uh, Mr. William Rivers to the hospital. He's been missing. Through uh, proper interrogation of three men, but I got it. I went on to find out that they um, beat uh, Mr. Simmerson up, took his money, and left him for dead. What it is, Mr. Simmerson was a person of interest because uh, he took William Rivers to the hospital. They thought that. Uh, he might know something on him. So they caught up with him, but chose to rob him. Beat him bad and left him for dead. What it is, this man might still be alive. That's the case. I want every wretch stalking this county till we find him. I'm asking for your support. Devil Shores Patrol, every citizen, everybody get involved and find this man. We've got our search teams in operation right now, but I want to enlarge it. I'm asking for your support.
I want to thank each and every one of you citizens for your support. Thank you for helping find John Simpson. He was out in the woods, unconscious most of the time, for weeks. But through proper medication, finding him in time, getting him to the hospital, he has recovered. He stayed there. But he has recovered, and I want to thank each and every one of you for your support. Thank you, citizens, very much. And what I'm saying is we've got refreshments and we put in a lot of work. So what it is, the sheriff's office has set up a refreshment room and you've earned it. Uh, Sheriff Winslow, I really appreciate uh, you working with us on this case. Now, we finally got to the bottom of it. Yeah. And uh, what it is, uh, I've talked with Inspector Williams, and this is going to be another case. So, uh, well, I guess uh, we might see more of uh, Inspector Williams. Yeah, probably. I would expect so. It's been nice talking with you, and uh, I'll see you next time. Okay. What I'm saying is, he thinks that he controls better his county, my county. But uh, I've got to win this next election. If I can just hold my composure and win, in the next four years, I'll get things straight. But we can use this man. Yep. It'd be good. 
Well, look, uh, I'm going to send him out to talk with you. Okay. Well, look, uh, um, uh, I'll be glad to pour you a drink. I mean, I know you. Uh, that's all right. What it is, you can make some of your deputies cruise you around. I know, uh, Sheriff of the County, you can't get caught for driving down the influence. <laughs> <laughs> when I would drink too much, I will. Uh, I'll put my deputies to work, though. Yeah. Carry me where I want to go. Yeah. Can't pay them for nothing. Yeah. Of course, the county pays them. What I'm saying is, he thinks that he controls Meadows County, my county. But uh, I've got to win this next election. If I'm just holding my composure and win. That makes us self president in all these places. Uh, he's just that tight guy. It shows up. You know, uh, I think I can gather more information by just uh, being around the people and listening to them talk. Like, uh, well, that's just I, I suspect somebody. Mm. Well, they tell me one story one day and one the next. Now, mm. what would you suggest? How do I talk to people like that? Especially in the bar. Well, you need to get them off to the side and, and uh, not have them around a crowd of people. Get them over to one side, just one-on-one, -on -one, you and them. And, and a lot of times they'll tell more than they would. They'll open themselves up more than they would being around a, another a group of people. So you need to move them away and, and do a conversation with them off to the side. What I'm saying is he runs this county. That I found out. Because there's no factors. And I mean, what I'm saying is, uh, 
these touring sites, this way of making money, well, he can put these people out of business and they're just uh, completely out of work. Nothing to support their families. What I'm saying is, um, this John Mattis, he's a powerful man. What I'm saying is, all these cowboys you see with badges on, what I'm saying, they're on here, so on them. It's just a fight that I lost. That's what he told the people in the hospital. What happened at that Western show? It was a woman stalking Mr. Rivers. He was worried about her showing up, so he came to the party, took a duster and a wig, and sure enough, she showed up at the last gunfight. So he got under the duster and the wig, and he got out without being suspected. People signing autographs and taking pictures. So there was no foul play on that part. Well, I just want to let you know that everything is okay. Well, I wish you the very best week or tour in sight. It's nice getting to you, Mr. Meadows. You know, Sheriff Lancelot, just when I thought that we'd got to the bottom of the problem, here comes another. The Good Samaritan that took Mr. John Rivers to the hospital, he's missing. What I'm saying, thanks to Investigator Williams, I've got three men in jail that I think are responsible. I've got evidence to believe that when they found out that John Summerson took Mr. William Rivers to the hospital, they thought possibly he knew enough of them to get him in trouble. So they went back and they found him. What it is, uh, I don't know that he knew anything on him, but they robbed him. It's a plain old simple common robbery and they left him for dead. I've got that much information. I can't prove it yet. They left him for dead. You know, back in the olden days when I first started in law, they'd sit you down in this straight chair. The room would be real dark. And they'd pull this bright light down on your face. And then they just really start popping the questions to you, and you, and they, they just sweat it out of them. Of the uh, sheriff's office. Now we know that Mr. Mattis controls this town. Maybe controls you. Contentment means, yes, 
Look, buddy, us cowboys are tired of you loosing around here asking questions, accusing us of something we're not guilty of. Every time that I ask something about Billy Two Rivers, everything gets quiet. And it seems like uh, somebody wants to shut me up. I've been physically attacked more than once. And most of it comes from asking questions. Now look, if you've got the answers, I want to know them. Got nothing to hide? Give me the answer. We'll put you down. Just, uh, how lucky do you feel? We all have a schedule to maintain. If the people supporting us pull out, we all go hungry. Mr. Meadows, I realize that you are in the tourist business in Red Agnes West. You are not a suspect. Possibly one of your cowboys had a, a live round 
in his chamber. And it was accident. I mean, Mr. William Rivers, he is Miss. Sure, my heart bleeds for all those people who have passed on. In a business, you don't quit when things don't go the way you want them to. Mr. Meadows, your cowboys have attacked me two different times when I was in the wooded area trying to gain information on Mr. William Rivers. Possibly he was in that area, possibly I had a gun fight. So far, I found nothing. Make sure cowboys look guilty. Again, Mr. Mattis, you are not a suspect. Maybe you can help me get to the bottom of this case. Think about it. All I'm asking, just think about it. Billy Two Rivers, he had a different attitude than most uh, Native Americans. What it is, his attitude was, let the white man kill the cow and I eat the steak. The buffalo is gone. Frontier is over. It's over for me, it's over for you. The difference is, you don't want it. They got a lot of shopping centers and interstates. What do you think? That's good thinking there. You, uh, I hadn't even thought of that. I bet you that's the case. I bet you anything that's what's going on. We need to check that out good. What would you suggest? How will we go about uh, checking it out? Some of the guys that I used to work with was really good at that. And they would do they would really do that and do a good job for me. I'll contact them and See what kind of plan they can put together. Oh. Okay, uh, what I plan on doing, I'm planning on, uh, you know, hanging around at the bars and kind of working under cover. I might get more information like that. Mm -hmm. If I saw I'm an investigator, uh, there'll be enough trouble with this. I'm about to ask questions, answer questions. Yeah. No, no. I'm going to try to gather what information I can out of loose talk. Okay. What we got is nothing. What we got is all in Officer Denbo's mind. It's one thing to live in a fantasy world and have conspiracy theories, but it's another thing. We've got real crimes and real investigations, and this is reality. We've got to get busy. We don't have time for fantasy. All I'm saying is that somebody is going to make a mistake. What I'm saying is, if there's somewhat out of town, 
I don't think we can catch them. You might get a task force and track them down 10 years from now. What I'm saying, still, we don't know that there is a murder. But uh, there's a strong point that we... Mr. William Rivers to the hospital. They thought possibly he knew enough of them to get him in trouble. So they went back and they found him. What it is, um, I don't know that he knew anything on him, but they robbed him. It's a plain old, simple, common robbery. And they left him for dead. I've got that much information. I can't prove it yet. They left him for dead. You know, back in the olden days when I first started in law, they'd sit you down in this straight chair. The room would be real dark. And they'd pull this bright light down on your face. And then they'd just really start popping the questions to you. And, you, and they'd, they'd just sweat it out of them, scare it out of them. And it's a whole lot different nowadays and the way it was then, but really that's that's the way they should do it now. I think they'd get a lot more straight answers out of people. I'm going to take your advice, Sheriff Winslow. I'm going to put these men under light. I'm going to interrogate every one of them separate. Interrogate every one of them separate. If their stories don't match up, I know that I'm on something. But I can't, oh, uh, what it is. I can't, I don't want a false confession. I'm going to strictly by the law, but I'm going to use old fashioned law procedure. Questioning these people, watch the expressions on their face, watch the the uh, quiver in their eyes, jumping of their, their lips, and just their facial expressions all together. You can pretty well determine whether they're telling the truth or not. They get all sweaty and and all uh, irritable, and they, they squirm and that kind of thing. You can pretty well tell. You put the pressure on. Uh, I'm Officer Denbo, and uh, is there any possibility that you might have any information on this case that we're working on, these three uh, missing people? No, sir, not right at the present time, but if I find out any information or anything, I'll try to get in contact with you. Thank you very much, Wiz. We're really in a quandary over this case. Well, I guess. I failed it. Whoever. Whoever killed it. I feel he had a quick temper. He was quick to fight. Somebody could have been out to set a lot of debt and that could have cost him his life. That's what I'm saying. Grant me the power to 
just to turn back the pages of time. I'd give all I owned if I could but atone to that silver and daddy of mine. Inspector Williams, come in, have, have a seat. Um, I just want to compliment you on your fine show, in it? The karate demonstration. I hate that I couldn't be there, but the sheriff in this county duty calls. Thank you, Sheriff Taylor. That's a nice compliment. But I'm sure you didn't call me in just for that. Look, I feel we could pop out a murder in this community. On the trail, and my voice is still. Please plant this heart of mine underneath the lonesome pine. Thank you. 
Somebody asked Mr. Williams, maybe I brought you in for nothing, but something just don't seem right. I know you go with the gut feeling, and this time I've got some feeling that something's not right. Still, so we don't know that there is a murder. But uh, there's a strong point that we have about a missing person's case. Now, what I'm saying is, Mr. Rivers, he traveled a lot. He could have just got tired of the place and just left. What a price he for himself. He could have gotten some brutal fight and possibly for his own good, felt that he should be getting out of town. I don't know what the problem is. He could possibly be living under another man. I don't know. Start with, I don't know that we're even, uh, we even got a case. But uh, I feel that we should find out. You mean spread out? Gun. Well, let's get out of here. These mosquitoes about to eat me up. No, man. I think that we could be on to something. Things are getting hot. The questions that I'm asking, people don't like it. I think you could be right. I mean, there's no evidence of foul play, but I can see the reaction. I can see the reaction in the eyes. I can see it. So what I'm saying, I just stay with it and possibly um, something will give. What it is, Mr. Williams, there's a lot of crimes in this community that I've got to deal with. I've got to cry to stop murder. Cut down an unnecessary fight. Possibly somebody to get killed from it. I've got to enforce the law. I've got to be there on any 911 call. I've got to be there when needed. And what I'm saying is, until we see that it's foul play, What I'm saying is going to cost the county a lot of money to bring a task force in. When it might not be necessary. I don't know, but I just feel that the killer will come to us. What we got to do is trick this man. We got to trick him into making him think that we know more on him than we really do. What I'm saying is, We'll watch the reactions. Maybe we might come up with something. They went through. He had to give way to the interstate, but he became a very rich man. A very rich man. He controls his county. The town was here first. But he stopped all factories, shopping centers, and 
Little means of employment from coming in. This is a tourist site. He has a uh, red enactments of the West. He was a historian. He loved the West. So what I'm saying, I just feel that Mr. Rivers could have been murdered. What I'm saying, murdered in this reenactment of the West. All we got to go on is Mr. Rivers' behavior. What I'm saying is, in the military, he was a good person until he got to drinking. When he got to drinking, he got mean. What it is, he liked the high standard of living. What I'm saying, he might not have anything to do with a mob head. He might not have to do anything with anybody owning money. He probably wasn't connected with drugs in any way. Now this is just a wild guess. I feel that whoever, whoever killed him, I feel he had a quick temper. He was quick to fight. Somebody could have been out to sell a lot of debt and that could have cost him his life. That's what I'm saying. for your support. Thank you for helping find John Simpson. Who was out in the woods, unconscious, making time for a week. But through proper medication, finding him in time, getting him to the hospital, he has recovered. He stayed there. But he has recovered, and I want to thank each and every one of you for your support. Thank you, citizens, very much. And what I'm saying is we've got refreshments and we put in a lot of work. So what it is, the sheriff's office has set up a refreshment room and you've earned it. Uh, Sheriff Winslow, I really appreciate uh, you working with us on this case. Now, we finally got to the bottom of it. Yeah. And uh, what it is, uh, I've talked with Inspector Williams, and this is going to be another case. So, uh, well, I guess uh, we might see more of uh, Inspector Williams. Yeah, probably. I would expect so. It's been nice talking with you, and uh, I'll see you next time. Okay.
Look, buddy. Us cowboys are tired of you loosing around here asking questions. Accusing us of something we're not guilty of. Every time that I ask something about Billy Two Rivers, everything gets quiet. And it seems like uh, somebody wants to shut me up. I've been physically attacked more than once. And most of it comes from asking questions. Now look, if you've got the answers, I want to know them. Got nothing to hide? Give me the answer. We'll put you down. Just uh, how lucky do you feel? Mosquitoes about to eat me up. I think that we could be on to something. Things are getting hot. The questions that I'm asking, people don't like it. I think you could be right. I mean, there's no evidence of foul play, but I can see the reaction. I can see the reaction in the eyes. I can see it. So what I'm saying, I just stay with it and possibly um, something will give. What it is, Mr. Williams, there's a lot of crimes in this community that I've got to deal with. I've got to cry to stop murder. Cut down an unnecessary fight. Possibly somebody to get killed from it. I've got to enforce the law. I've got to be there on any 911 call. I've got to be there when needed. And what I'm saying is, until we see that it's foul play, What I'm saying is going to cost the county a lot of money to bring a task force in. When it might not be necessary. I don't know, but I just feel that the killer will come to us. What we got to do is trick this man. We got to trick him into making him think that we know more on him than we really do. What I'm saying is, We'll watch the reactions. Maybe we might come up with something. Well, just keep up the good work. Stop. 
your face and bring back the gold to your hair. If God would but grant me the power just to turn back the pages of time, I'd give all I own if I could but atone to that silver-haired daddy. The fluorescent team has been in. They found no blood stains. Possibly the man could have bled from the inside. Possibly he fell on a bell of hay. Well, I don't know what a cowboy's using. I don't know what year they started bailing hay. He wouldn't give them any protection hiding behind the bell. That's part of the act. It could have been a planned act. Let's just say if Mr. Rivers fell, on this bill of hay. And bled in it all, possibly uh, the blood was taken away with the bell of hay. I don't know, there's no evidence to convict this man. There's no evidence to convict anybody for possibly killing this man. There's no signs that he's dead. But something just don't seem right. What I'm saying is, what you're saying that man was shot and he was ushered out. It was all part of the show and people thought that it was a show, no foul play. Possibly the man bled from the inside. Possibly he fell over a bale of hay. And that could be part of that. So what I'm saying is, um, the blood could be in the hay, but the hay's been removed. Well, what I can tell you about Mr. Rivers, unlike most Native Americans, he, um, he lives high class. What I'm saying, he lives in a brick home, he, he, he made good money at employment. But all these clubs and whatever it goes to, it just, uh, money-wise, it don't make 